Alright, so let's continue with the CBR 600 rever reverse trike projects. Now, I originally wanted to start a new project in th this week, but uh, I am still waiting for parts to get here, so that's going to have to be next week. So, now, next thing we need to do with this is we need to install suspension on this thing to get rid of this tube holding everything up. So, now, originally with the original setup, because we were using a motorcycle swing arm, we were able to use this motorcycle shock, but I don't want to use this because it is a little bit small, so let's upgrade to this. I found this at the scrapyard a couple years ago, and I'm finally putting it to use. So, it's, up. it's a lot, definitely a lot bigger, but the spring is actually a little bit thinner, so I think this, is a, I think this will work a lot better. Alright, so it's a little bit soft, but when I stand on it, where my weight's going to be, it like sags perfect. So, I'd say that's pretty good. So I think the next step is let's work on building the brake disc as well as getting this sprocket to line up with this sprocket.
So I know this machine can do threading, but I haven't figured out how to do it yet, so we're just gonna use the old tap and die. Yeah, I'll admit, the uh, the chain is really close to the brake caliper, but uh, there is clearance. There's about like an eighth of an inch gap in between them, so it should be fine. There shouldn't be any issues with that. So Now, next step we need to do is we need to bump out the sprocket on the engine about an inch to inch and a quarter, so therefore it'll line up with this sprocket.
Alright, it's all welded together. Let's reassemble it. Alright, we got the rear suspension assembled, it's finished, it's all welded together now. It, 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 the suspension, it, it, I'll admit, it's a little, it's a little on the soft side, but uh, it, se it seems to sag perfect when I stand where I'm going to be sitting on this thing. So it seems to work fine, as long as there isn't going to be somebody else that weighs a lot more than me driving this thing. Plus, you don't really want the suspension to ride like this, because if the tire hits a pothole, you want the suspension to be uh, sagging a little bit, so therefore the tire can move down in the pothole and not be... You don't want it to ride like this. So, you want, you want it to ride with a little bit of sag. That's how suspension works. So Now, I will admit, I didn't really put this pivot point for the, for the uh, A-arm in the proper position, I, I put it a little too high up, so what, what that means is when the suspension is like this, all the way up, the chain is pretty loose, but when the suspension moves down, it gets pretty tight. So that's a bit of a mistake on my part, but when I'm, you know, when, I'm, when it's at riding height, it's at a perfect tension right there. And I will have to put some type of plastic on here because the chain does ride on top of this A-arm. Oh, we just gotta put some plastic on there so it's not metal on metal noise. So, now, the rear suspension is mostly finished. We still need to add the uh, the brake line from the bra rear brake caliper to the brake system. We can do that later. So, next thing we need to do is, because remember, the front suspension is not completely done. We still need to add, we still need to mount the brake calipers to the A-arm, or, or to the spindles to get the front brakes installed, so why don't we do that next.
All right, got it all welded together. Also had to, you know, clean up some of the edges on here. Just had to round some of these corners off and kind of clean these things up a little bit. So now let's, uh, let's reassemble the front end. So the brakes work. Uh, they're a little sticky right now. You can hear you can hear that they are rubbing, but hopefully that'll uh, fix itself. So I think the next step is let's uh, let's reinstall the headlights. So last night we got the headlights working again, got the t turn signals reinstalled. So I think the next step is let's see if we can get this engine running. Now this thing has been sitting for like three or four months, so we probably need to drain the old gas out, clean the carburetors, and I did buy new spark plugs for this engine. So let's do all that and see if we can get this thing to fire up. all the gas out of the gas tank, fuel lines, and the carburetors. I'm not going to go too in depth of cleaning this thing, I'm just going to clean the jets out and hope that's good enough. So, turns out that each one of the pilot jets had were clogged. So, that's probably why this thing was running like crap. So, cleaned all the pilot jets, cleaned the main jets, cleaned the, cleaned the bowls, cleaned in here. The only thing I really didn't clean was the uh, floats. You don't really need to clean those. So, let's reassemble this thing and put it back on the engine.
Did that work? Is it on? I think it's on. Alright, so I have been spending about three hours figuring out and working on air boxes. Now, I'm going to try to keep this short, but basically what happened, and th honestly, this is kind of why I've hated this engine from the very beginning, because the, the I bought this engine from Craigslist, it was a parts bike, I paid like 450 bucks for it, and when I got it, it was super confusing because I figured out over a long period of time that it was that everything on the bike wasn't from a single year bike. Half of the parts were from an older F2, the other half were from a newer F3, like the frame was an older F2, but the tires were a newer F3, the engine was a newer F3, the wiring was a newer F3, but the plastics were an older F2, the gauge cluster was an older, it was a newer F3. So it was super confusing buying parts for it, like why is this not fit, why is this wheel different, why are brakes different, why, why is, so, and I know for a fact the engine is a newer F3, so I bought an air box because this was, the, this is the original air box that came with the bike, and I didn't have the top portion, so I bought this, I bought this for a newer F3, the engine is a newer F3, but this air box doesn't fit on the carburetor. So now I'm thinking maybe the carburetors are an older F2. That's why this doesn't fit. And luckily, I, I searched through the many, many bins of random stuff that I have, and I managed to find the original air box that I kept. This is why I refuse to get rid of anything. I'm a hoarder. I'll admit that I'm a hoarder. But this is the reason why I refuse to get rid of stuff. I found this. And this does fit on the carburetors, and I believe this is for an older F2. Also, the velocity stacks that are from this, I believe that's what these are called. Uh, these are smaller, and that's why the newer velocity stacks from this airbox never fit. I always had to hammer them in, and they never really fit properly. So I guess you can kind of see the size difference. Uh, not really, because I had to hammer had to hammer these in so they'll, they'll fit kind of. So so basically, I've been spending three hours trying to figure out why does this not fit? What year is this? What year is this? I took a little while to find this. So I have the velocity stacks that fit in the carburetors. I have the bottom portion that fits on the carburetors. And luckily, the newer top portion does fit on the older bottom portion. So that will work. It's just I don't have an air filter. So we're, we're going to have to buy one of those. So let's put all this stuff together. Now, I will admit, I don't have four of these, uh, and I honestly don't feel like ordering them and waiting for them to get here, so I'm just gonna not install, I only have one, I don't have four. So I'm not gonna install those, and I'm gonna hope that it's not going to affect the uh, engine performance uh, that much. But I will order them when I order the air filter, and then we'll, we'll install them later, so. So, let's see if we can get this stuff to work for the carburetors that we have. Ah, it's a miracle. It fits. Alright, let's see if this thing will fire up finally. So I want to make sure that this fuel pump is working, so I have the hose off. Let's turn it over and see if it works. Ooh, it backfired. the fuel pump bad? I wonder if that is the issues I've been having. Maybe, maybe it's just a bad fuel pump. Because it's not... <laughs> dead battery. But it's not working. I have it kind of clamped onto the frame. It's hard to get off. Ah. 
I can't feel it. <laughs> and the battery's dead. <laughs> Normally with a fuel pump like this, you can feel it vibrating, but this one's just... Yeah. This is not even doing anything. Before I go trying to replace this pump, let's see if it's... Let's see if it's the pump or if it's the wiring. So... Let's just put it on the battery. Uh, I don't know. Oop. It works. So the pump works. So it's the wiring that's bad. Huh. So I put the pump back on the wiring. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it is, it is slowly pumping. So th this is what I'm talking about with the wiring with this thing. It's kind of dodgy. It's like you got to sometimes like fiddle with it a little bit to get it to work. So now it's working. So I guess let's just, uh, let's put this back on and just and see if it'll pump fuel now. Okay, now I can feel it working. I don't know if you guys can hear it. There it goes! It's working now! It's kind of a good thing that this is uh, you know, eas easily accessible versus when it's a motorcycle. You, know, you gotta take the seat off, you gotta take the gas tank off, and all that kind of stuff just to get to the spark plugs. The annoying thing is you always gotta fish them out. Yeah, these ones are, I mean, they're not terrible, but let's just, let's just re replace them anyways. With new spark plugs, I'm always not really sure how tight you're really supposed to do it. I'm always afraid that I'm going to snap them off in, the, in there. So it's like, don't, don't over torque it, but you don't have to, I don't know. Just don't over torque it, I guess. I know I said in the last video that I, I was, I'm tempted to put a different engine in this project, but I don't know. If I can get this thing to run better, then, I'm, then I'll stick with this engine. I'm a little tempted to put like a CBR 1000 in this thing, because I know that that would be nuts, but because I'm not really sure what to, honestly, I'm not really sure what to do with this project once it's done. You know, I can't really think of any place around here that I can take it. Most of the tracks, not all, but most of the tracks around here don't really allow custom vehicles. I don't know, I'm sure I can find a couple places where I can take it to, to, to race or at least drive it around. Do something with this project. Maybe I should have uh, checked that it's getting a spark before before putting those back on. Can I pull one of these out? Let's just verify that it's getting a spark. Spark's working. Choke is on. Ah, what's going on now? Ah. Sometimes the starter motor has to be bumped a little bit. I'm gonna do this. It's not really good for the engine, but desperate times. <sighs> yep. Sometimes you gotta bump the starter over a little bit. Oh, 
I never, I never reconnected the fuel line to the carburetor. Oh. Whoopsies. Yeah, I thought I smelled gas. Whoops. Yeah, gas was just like pouring out right on top of the engine. Let's try this again. So not only did I forget to uh, put the th put the fuel line back on the carburetors, I forgot to close the float bowl drain plugs as well. <laughs> so let me do that real quick. Yeah, that's kind of important. You know, don't want. Yeah, there needs to be fuel in the float bowls for it to run. Is there anything else I forgot? I don't think so. Let's just keep going. See if the clutch still works. can't tell if that's a tire spinning or the clutch slipping when the RPM goes up like that. It kind of works. It, the throttle's a little, you know, throttle's a little sticky, the clutch is a little sticky, brakes kind of work.
Yeah, maybe letting this thing just sit idling for like five or seven minutes without a radiator fan isn't really the best idea. It's starting to drip coolant out of the uh, overflow. It's starting to drip coolant on the engine and on the ground. So, oops. Uh, let this let, let this thing cool off.